let's do the video, shall we? Got Adam here, he's on the camera. <laughs> In my new t-shirt <laughs> okay they got it all ready for me let's get into gog and magog meshach and tubal and see what the bible has to say here we are prophecy of magog gog magog meshach and tubal now i told you last week i at one time i just said what i was taught in bible college and what i read in books and what pastors said and i just assumed that gog and magog were Russia. The reason I assumed it is because if you take a, a string and put it on a globe on Jerusalem and put it on the North Pole, it goes right through Moscow. And Meshach, uh, I was told, was uh, an old name for Moscow and Tubal was an old name for Tobolsk, a former capital. Uh, that turns out to be wrong about Meshach and Tubal. Russia didn't even exist at the time, neither did Moscow or Tobolsk or any place else up there. Yeah, it didn't come about until centuries later. And so I finally did what I should have been doing all along. I got my Bible out and looked up Gog and Magog. I looked up Meshach and Tubal. And then I got out some dictionaries and books and maps. And I looked and traced through history to see what the Bible had to say according to the historical data that was available. Not to Christian data, but just uh, the facts of history. And I came to a totally different conclusion about Gog and Magog. So I'm taking this from the little book I wrote, The Prophecy of Israel and Magog, Ezekiel 38 and 39, is the United States in prophecy. The Bible is our only source. We can't go by Schofield or Larkin or Mike Pearl. We have to go by the Bible. And so we're going to open it up and see what it has to say. Here's the prophecy, Ezekiel 38 and 39, part of it. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And then he names five countries that are going to assist Meshach and Tubal in an invasion of Israel. Persia. That's Iran, Ethiopia, you know what that is. That's North African country once removed from Israel by Egypt. And Libya, also a country once removed from Israel by Egypt. All of them with shield and helmet. You say, well, that's kind of ancient, isn't it? <laughs> Military all have shields and helmets now. Uh, I saw just yesterday Israel going through some tunnels with shields. Gomer and all his bands, so that's another one. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, and now Gomer, the house of Togomar, and that's Turkey, of the north quarters, and all his bands. In other words, Turkey's going to be accompanied by a lot of different nations, a lot of his bands, and many people with thee. So this group with this invading force of Gog and Magog with five countries that, by the way, are all enemies of Israel right now, uh, Persia, <laughs> Ethiopia, Libya, Nagomer, that's open yet, and his bands, and Togomar, Turkey. Turkey's turning against Israel. And many people with these, so there'll be other nations assisting in this assault on Israel. So who is Gog and Magog? Genesis chapter 10 is where we start on this subject. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's the when they got off the ark, there was three sons, and under them were the sons born after the flood. So he breaks them down into the sons and the sons of the three sons. The sons of Japheth, and by the way, if you're a white person, you are a Japhetic person. There's some darker skinned people who are also Japhetic, but uh, basically, just to make it easy for you to understand, uh, Japhetic people are basically the Indo-European uh, and their descendants. The sons of Japheth are Gomer and Magog. So who is Magog? He was the son of one of Noah's sons. And Mid Media and Javan and Tubal and Meshach. So there's that Tubal and Meshach we have in the book of Ezekiel. And Tyrus. 
So these were all sons of Japheth. And the sons of Gomer, and this is also a son, so the grandsons were Ashkenaz and Pithath and Togamar. So there's your Turkey. See, the Turkish people are not Arabic, just as the Iranians are not Arabic. They don't, they don't descend from Ishmael. And so here's these five groups of people that are going to assist Russia and the United States and all of Europe <laughs> in an invasion of Israel. We're going to show you that. The sons of Javan, Elisha and Tarish and Kittim and Donath Nim, by these, these sons, were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands. So the Gentiles scattered to different lands, every one after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. So the Japhetic nations are Gog and Magog and descendants and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the, and this is in the book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 8, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Where's that four quarters? That's everywhere, north, south, east, and west. Gog and Magog. So he defines the nations in the four quarters all over the earth as Gog and Magog. You know, that sort of settles it, doesn't it? Who's Gog and Magog? To get them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. So this is in the tribulation, the latter part here in Revelation 20. Now, the Ezekiel 38 and 39 are not necessarily in the tribulation. That could well occur before the tribulation, or it could occur before and during as well. So that's yet to be discussed. But notice that the four quarters of the earth is where Gog and Magog are located. It's not just Russia. Now, Russia is a part of the Japhetic people. They certainly are, uh, as well as France and Spain and uh, Portugal and Italy and uh, Europe and uh, Switzerland, Ireland, Britain, so forth. Now, the Northern Federation of, Ga of Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Gomer encompasses, and I get this from history, the British Isles. That's all Celtic, Gauls, Irish, Welts, Britons. They're all Gomer. Scots or Magog, according to the Malaysian genealogy. Anglo-Saxons are all of this group, Gomer, Magog, and Meshach. France, Gauls, and Britons, Gomer, Franks, Goths, other Germanic peoples, Gomer, Magog, and Meshach. And then Spain and is Gomer and Tubal and the Basque is Tubal, and the Goths are Meshach, and finally, the United States. Every one of the above mentioned through the leadership is from British, Irish stock, and are Gomer and Magog. So that fifth invading force, Gomer, is going along with Gog and Magog. So it is a panoramic of the sons of Japheth and the grandsons of Japheth. That's who Gog and Magog, Meshach, and Tubal are. Now back to Ezekiel 38. He said, Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thy and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited. He's telling Israel, after many days they'll be visited. In the latter years, that's toward the end, Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. That's description of how Israel came about and is gathered out of many people. Israel is made up of people from all the nations of the earth who've come there after the Holocaust. Against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations. <laughs> hey, that's good. In 1947, the United Nations declared that there should be a homeland for the Jews in Palestine. So the nations got together, and it's the United Nations, the nations of the earth, that established Israel as a renewed, revived nation in these last days, brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely 
all of them. You see, that actually hasn't happened yet, that Israel is dwelling safely. It will happen. Thou shalt ascend, he's talking to Gog and Magog, like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. So that's the invading force. Therefore, he says, verse chapter 39 of Ezekiel, Therefore, thou son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee, and I'll cause thee to come up from the north parts, and I'll bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. So the invading force that comes down through Lebanon uh, the mountains north of Israel are actually in southern Lebanon, mostly. And so it is there that this, that God will meet this invading force and bring fire and brimstone down from heaven and burn them up, only leaving a sixth part of them. So God's not going to wipe out these nations. He's just going to wipe out their army, all but one-sixth of it. And I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and I'll cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. It's interesting that Israel calls their uh, missile system the arrow system. Uh, so do some of the other nations. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort, to the beast of the field, to be devoured. And thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Now, there's, there's a lot we didn't cover in these two chapters. You can read them for yourself in 38 and 39. Plus, there's accompanying passages. Now, he says, I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. So, you see, this invading force dwells in the isles. In the Bible, the isles were any nation that was reached by ship. They called it an isle. Britain is called the British Isles. The United States would have been called an isle in those days, Australia, New Zealand. So he said, I will send a fire on Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. What better describes the United States than dwelling carelessly? You see, I keep these videos short because I know you, know, you won't listen to the whole thing. You will listen and watch two hours of zombies mothers eating their sons and that sort of thing, but you have trouble watching <laughs> 30 minutes of a Bible lesson. So I try to keep it short. Why? Because America is dwelling carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So this event is not going to be what's going on now in Israel. What's going on now in Israel is just leading up to it. Why? Because Israel is not dwelling peaceably. We do not have United States and Russia and all those nations invading Israel from the north. Libya is not involved. Ethiopia is not involved. And so it just, it's not, it's not, it doesn't fit the prophecy yet, although you can see that it's uh, leading up to it. Now, here's a passage in Zechariah speaks of the same event, Zechariah 14, 12. And this shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand up on their feet. Their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. He's talking about fire. So while a soldier stands on his feet, before he can fall and hit the ground, his tongue is burnt out of his mouth, and his eyes are burnt out of his head, and ashes hit the ground. Now, when this was written, there was no, n not the possibility of this taking place. There was no way that anyone could be consumed while they stood upon their feet that just instantaneously. Looking in the face of a nuclear explosion would do that. But I don't think this is a nuclear explosion. Could be. Could be God's using it. But I do believe it is the acts of God himself because the end result is going to be the people are going to say God did it and it's going to turn many people to God and they're going to recognize that he's the God of Israel when this takes place so I can't say definitively that it wouldn't be self-inflicted 
or there wouldn't be nuclear use by Israel, but I doubt it. I think it's going to be a supernatural like in the days of Moses. Okay, we took this from the book, The Prophecy of Magog and Israel, Ezekiel 38 and 39. It's a 55-page book that gives a whole lot more detail than I covered here. And I also have this book I wrote, Who is the Antichrist? You might find that very interesting. Now, by the way, I don't make any money off any of this. This is all put in a nonprofit. It all goes to sharing the gospel with people all over the world. And we also have this, the book of Revelation, it's also well illustrated, and it comes with this painting that I did years ago. Can I get back far enough for you to see that? Okay, and this is a reproduction of a painting that's about eight, ten feet long uh, that I did years ago. So the book corresponds to the uh, scripture verses that you see written on the chart. So if you want to study the book of Revelation, this helps you see the picture the whole thing as you're going through it. Again, I'm not trying to sell you something because I, I don't make a dime. Don't get any royalty, don't get anything. All this goes into a non-profit to get the gospel to the whole world. But I, I just want to make them available because it'll be a help to you, be a blessing. Okay, that's all.